Well, hello, my name is Devin Knight. Welcome to a new series of videos that I'm gonna be doing on integration between HubSpot and Power Automate. Now, HubSpot may be a new application or a new tool for many of you. Uh, this is, uh, HubSpot is not a Microsoft application. It is a commonly used one by many marketing and sales organizations, however. Um, but HubSpot essentially is a marketing, sales, and customer service integration tool that a lot of organizations use. And the reason why we want to explore how HubSpot and Power Automate work together is because oftentimes many organizations don't just use Microsoft or don't just use HubSpot or they don't just use one application alone. They have many different ones that they're working with. And so it's interesting to explore the integration that you can have between Microsoft's platforms with a tool like HubSpot. Now, the way that we're going to be doing that again today is going to be through Power Automate. Power Automate is going to be our integration tool that allows us to push information into HubSpot or pull information out of HubSpot or even update information with inside of HubSpot's database. And uh, so if you're a customer of HubSpot, this might be a great way to be able to see how you can push and pull data from HubSpot's database to other systems that you might have. Now we're again going to be leveraging this tool known as Power Automate. If you are a frequent visitor of our channel, you are likely familiar with Power Automate. However, I want to put a big disclaimer on this video since uh, we're at the beginning of it here that to be able to do some of the things I'm going to be showing you today with Power Automate, you do need a Power Automate premium license. I'm not going to dig deep into Power Automate licensing for this video. That's not the purpose of this. But I do want you to have that knowledge because whenever we go to actually start to work with Power Automate, that's going to be one of the requirements that you have a Power Automate premium license to be able to tap into HubSpot's API. So that's our main focus for this video series. For today's video, however, we're going to be really focusing in on just the HubSpot side of things. Uh, we'll have some subsequent videos that will come out later where we'll start to tap a little bit more into the Power Automate integration, but we got to start somewhere. And the place that we're going to start is really within HubSpot. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is exploring how to create a private app with inside of HubSpot. The purpose of that is to allow you to tap into HubSpot's API in a secure way. And then the other thing that we're going to be looking at is the HubSpot API documentation. We'll be looking at the theory briefly, but we'll explore some of the things that we can do within the API. Now, the good news is, I'll uh, let you know this in advance, the HubSpot API documentation is actually rather good. It's some of the better API documentation I've seen. Uh, I've seen quite a, quite a few different places, and HubSpot's is probably one of the best ones I've seen as far as how they document their API usage. So that's good. That's going to help us quite a bit because that documentation is something that we will need and have to have handy whenever we're working on the Power Automate side. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and close this one little simple slide I have open here. And we're going to begin to look at Power Automate. Uh, sorry, HubSpot. HubSpot. That's what we're focusing on first. So I'm going to actually launch open and bring over on the screen my HubSpot instance. Now you're not really going to see, uh, I'm not gonna log in or create a HubSpot instance here with you today. I am using the Pragmatic Works one, so I am being careful of what I show on the screen as we go through this. Right now you're just seeing my information. But assuming you already have a HubSpot instance that you work with, you would sign into it. And then the first thing that you're going to need to do to be able to create a private app is you're going to go up to the top right hand corner and click on the little gear icon, the settings icon that you see right here. So by going to the settings icon, that will take you to the exact screen that I'm looking at right now. Once you navigate over to the settings with inside of HubSpot, you're then going to want to go over to the left navigation and with inside of the integrations section, you'll find the integrations section over here. You're going to expand that and then we're going to go to the private apps section. So the private apps is where you can actually create your own app, which will securely allow you to connect to the HubSpot API, and that's what we'd like to do today. So if you're following along, you're gonna go underneath integrations and then select private app or private apps. Now you'll see I have a couple that are already created here. In fact, you'll notice here that I use this application, uh, the private app capability and this feature with inside of HubSpot very frequently. You'll, you'll notice I'm already making 37,000 API calls a day. Uh, some of this will depend on, depend on your HubSpot licensing as well. So you want to check with that depending on how many, how much API calls they allow you to do. 
That's all going to be very dependent on your HubSpot licensing. But for what we're going to be doing today, we're going to create a private app. And you can see pretty clearly on how to do that right here. We'll select the Create a Private App button in the middle of our screen. And we're going to give the app a name. You can call this really whatever you want. I'm going to call this YouTube. And I'll give it a little dash there just so we can have a YT icon there. Now you can replace the logo. This is all HubSpot's doing here. You can replace the logo. I definitely recommend that you provide some kind of a description. So that way when you come back to this six months from now, you'll know what in the world this is doing. So I'm just going to, for the purposes of this, uh, put something in here like uh, YouTube example. All right. Once you've given it a name and given it a description, you'll then go to the scopes section on the top center part of your screen. So you'll find that right here. What the scopes section will allow you to, to do is determine the scope at which this private app has access to HubSpot data. So the idea is you may create a private app, but you only want it to have a very narrow focus or a narrow scope on what it's allowed to do. And so through the scopes section, you can tell the private app or tell HubSpot what this private app is going to have access to do. So we're going to go visit that scopes section here. And you'll see there's four major sections here that you can determine this private app's access. For the purposes of our video series that we're going to do, we're going to primarily focus in on the CRM section right here. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the CRM section and kind of talk with you a little bit while I pretty much check off most of the items that I have here. Again, what we're doing here is we're giving the private app access to either read data from these objects or write data or perhaps both. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of open this up a little bit to my CRM data that I have with inside of HubSpot. Again, note that there are other ways that you can connect into various other objects. But what I'm interested in for the purposes of our set of demonstrations that we're going to be doing is I really want to be able to connect into contacts data, like tell me the contacts that I have with inside of Salesforce. These would be basically like marketing leads. Uh, you'll actually see you have uh, contacts up here as well. I think this is really the one that we want up on the top, the objects contacts. The schema is more kind of the organization or the metadata. Uh, I also want to be able to pull in things like deals. So those are like sales opportunities that I want to bring into HubSpot. Maybe I want to have in companies. Maybe there's a few other things I might be interested in. But I'm going to go ahead and check off all the items in the CRM section to give me access to be able to connect into any of these objects that are available. Again, you can explore other ones if you want, but I'm going to leave it as is, and we're going to select Create App in the top right-hand corner, way up here, and that will create this new application for me. So I'll hit Create App. All right, so it's going to give you a little bit of a uh, information here, letting you know that it's going to provide an access token. That access token is going to be pretty important. Uh, it's something that you generally don't want to share with others. I will be sharing it on my screen here, but don't worry. By the time these videos are uh, posted, this access token will no longer be available. I will delete this app. But this is something that you would use whenever you go to connect into the API. It's going to ask you for your access token, and that's essentially how do you connect into the API this is your authentication to the API. So I'm going to hit continue creating. And then this is the access token that's provided to me. You can see it's obfuscated some of the information here, but you can hit show token and this will show you the full API token that you're going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and hit show token. Again, this is not information I would normally share on YouTube. However, this will be deleted by the time this is posted on YouTube. So I'm showing the full token here. I'll go ahead and hit copy to clipboard. And I'm just going to open up a little notepad on the side here just so we can have this handy for later because we will need to use this access token later on, especially whenever we want to connect into Power Automate, for example. All right, so I'll hit close on this. My private app has now been created. You can actually go find that access token again if you wanted to. If you went underneath authentication, you can find the access token here if you'd like. You can also go under the logs section and kind of see the usage of this particular private app. But that's pretty much it. That's all we're going to need here. We've created the private app. We can also hit back to all private apps up top here. And then that'll show us all of the private apps that we've previously created. So you can see right now I have three. One of them I'm actually using. A couple other ones are for other interesting things that we're doing at Pragmatic Works. But the YouTube one on the bottom is the one that we just created together. All right, there you go. So now that we've created this private app, we can use this inside of Power Automate. But the big question is going to be, how do I do that? 
And so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to explore some of the HubSpot API documentation to be able to understand how to properly bring back information from within inside of HubSpot. So what we're going to do, and we're going to explore a little bit here, is the HubSpot API documentation. I'm going to bring this on over on the correct screen here just so we can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. So let me bring this over. There we go. All right, so this is the HubSpot API documentation. There is an older legacy set of documentation you can go through, but you probably won't have a need to do that. This is the version three API that I'm showing today, and that's the current one that I have the documentation for up on my screen. So it's a, it is a REST API. You can bring in information, you can post information, you can get information, you can put or delete information from within inside of the HubSpot database. And you, generally what you'll kind of do is you'll ask yourself, what kind of information are you interested in exploring within inside of HubSpot? So if you're interested in exploring things like contacts, then what I would do is I would go up to the top here where it says find any documentation guide or tutorial, and I would simply type in contacts. And when you do that, you're going to see all kinds of information that's brought back about the uh, API endpoints that you can work with. So simply by typing in contact, I can see here I can update a contact, I can create a contact, I can read a contact, list a contact, I can even follow certain G GDPR rules that uh, Europe has to make sure I delete all information about a particular contact. Really, you can select any one of these options here. If I select create, for example, this will take me to the full documentation about the contacts object. And you can read up on the documentation here if you'd like. You can learn about how to create a contact. But what I tend to find myself doing most often here is going to the inputs, or sorry, endpoints section right here. The endpoint section is probably my favorite part of the documentation because it actually lets you test things out. It allows you to pass in that private app uh, ID that we looked at a few moments ago to be able to verify that it's going to actually return back information. So if I go to endpoints here, you'll see here are all the different kinds of things that you can do. You can archive a batch of contacts. You can create a batch of contacts. You can read a batch of contacts. You can update a batch of contacts. And then it gets a little bit more basic here, just list contacts. Uh, I want to create a contact rather than a batch of contacts. I want to read a contact. You'll notice it has some variables or parameters you can pass in, like the contact ID. And then I can update, do all sorts of things. I can delete. I can, let's see, there's the GDPR delete options here. So there's lots of different ways you can connect in. But what I really want to do, and this, this is going to lead us into our second video, is I want to use within inside of Power Automate and check to see if a contact already exists. And if the contact already exists, great, I don't need to do anything. But if the contact doesn't exist, then I'm going to create one. So I'm going to really use the API in two different ways. I want to first search for a contact. If I get a hit, if a contact comes back, then that means the contact already exists and I don't need to create one. If I search for a contact and find one does exist, then great, I just want to go update that contact or perhaps I want to tie an opportunity or a deal uh, to that contact. So this is really the first exploration of what we're going to be doing. This is part one of a set of videos we're going to be doing. This part one is really geared towards setting things up and that setup really involved creating a private app within inside of HubSpot. So hopefully this got you set up as far as that goes. Pretty simple process. You noticed that the main thing that we had to do was set the scope of what that private app has access to. But once you've done that, you are good to go. Hopefully this gets you started. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe our videos at Pragmatic Works. We love the, uh, all the content that we can provide to you, but it only happens because of your support. So thank you so much and look forward to sharing more with you in a future video on this. Thanks so much. Take care.